Hey guys, today I'm reacting to Geography Now, Netherlands, so should be pretty interesting. Yeah, Netherlands is a very flat country with tall people and it's in Northwestern Europe, pretty small country. Yeah, and uh, right next to Belgium and Germany. So, uh, yeah, interesting stuff. Uh, you know, the language is, um, pretty neat. Kind of sounds a bit like, uh, American English mixed with German, in my opinion. You know, just like if you just heard it randomly. Like, you, it's almost like you could, you could kind of understand it. But, like, it's just, it's like... You would think it's English if you're hearing it from a distance, but then you, you couldn't understand it. Anyway, that's just kind of my opinion of it. Um, But yeah, let's get started. Geography Now, Netherlands. Cool ass country. Let's, let's stop. A little awkward. Why? Because two years ago, my Dutch friend Vincent... Hey guys, so this is going to be a little awkward. Why? Because two years ago, my Dutch friend Vincent, who used to do the animations before I regrettably hired Ken... Wait, what? He came and visited <laughs> here in LA. Long story short, I promised him he could be in the Netherlands episode, so we pre-shot some footage, and this was the intro we made. I flew over, this guy, a real Dutchman, say hi to Vincent, right here. Hey, Vincent. Hey, look. Vincent, I know the Dutch are tall, but just step down from the box, okay? Oh, For step down. Well, you get off of your box, then. <laughs> Good for me. I can never tell Bruh. these days. Oh, and this episode is on the Netherlands. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host, Barbs. Now, there are many countries that deal with water issues. Some lack water, some have too much water, and some, like the Netherlands, have bridled the wild stallion and have learned how to control the water and use it to their advantage. Water is probably the most powerful element in the Netherlands, and without it, they would be, I don't know, pretty useless. So what do you say, 2016 Vincent? And then now, politieke geografie. <laughs> So yeah, stop calling this place Holland. That's just one part of the country. Even though their country's national tourism website is called holland.com. You're not helping us here, Dutchies. Bruh. Okay, there's a town called The Hulk. First of all, the country is located in northwestern Europe along the North Sea, bordered by Germany and Belgium. The country is divided into 12 provinces. Here's 2016 Vincent naming all of them for you. They are Limburg, North Holland, Zeiland, South Holland, Utrecht, Gelderland, Overijssel, Drenthe, Groningen, Friesland, North Holland, and the newest province, Flevoland. Almost all of Flevoland was reclaimed from the Zuiderzee in the 19th 1950s. So besides being famous for making cheese and clogs, we also make our own land. The country kind of <laughs> has two capitals, Amsterdam, the largest city and economic hub of the country, and home to the royal palace. And just to skip over, the third largest city, The Hague, acts as the second capital, which holds the seat of government, as well as the International Court of Justice. Yeah. The second largest city, though, would be Rotterdam, Pretty internationally which famous. the busiest seaport in all of Europe. The busiest airport, though, is, of course, Amsterdam's Schiphol International, Europe's third busiest airport, carrying nearly 70 million passengers annually. Now we reach the overseas territories. Apart from the mainland European part, the country actually holds sovereign over six other island entities in the Caribbean, remnants of the colonial past. These are collectively called the Dutch Caribbean. And here's where it gets a little confusing. Technically, the Netherlands is a country made up of four countries, the mainland Netherlands, as well as three other constituent countries, kind of like what Wales and Scotland are to the UK. They are Aruba, Curaçao, and St. Martin, which is actually half of an island shared with the French overseas. A lot of people Europe. take vacations on Aruba. French. This means that this one island is the only area which the Netherlands technically borders France. These guys hold a high level of autonomy huh. they can have their own constitutions and currency otherwise the remaining three islands are Bonaire St. Eustatius and Little Saba which by the way has the shortest airport runway in the world these three fall under the title of special municipalities and do not belong to any province they are directly controlled by the Dutch government however in 2011 they decided to switch currencies and adopt the US dollar all these <laughs> islands lie in the subregion known as the Lesser Antilles Aruba Curaçao and Bonaire are usually referred to as the ABC islands lying in the subregion of the Leeward Antilles whereas St. Eustatius, Saba, and St. Martin, usually called the SSS Islands, are located in the subregion of the Leeward Islands. Keep in mind, at one point, all six of these islands were called the Netherland Antilles and operated collectively as a single constituent country with the capital at Willemstad and Curaçao. They even competed separately in the Olympics. With the exception of Aruba, who had autonomy in 1986, it wasn't until the early 2000s when they all voted for their future, and it kind of went like this. Okay, guys, you have four options for your future. Choose wisely. You can have closer ties to us, remain just as you are in the Netherland Antilles, autonomy as a constituent country within the Kingdom of the Netherlands, or you can opt for complete independence as a new nation and break away from us. We vote for autonomy as constituent countries. Me too. 
What the? We want closure ties and we'll settle for special municipality status. Really, Bonaire? You're one of us, the ABC Islands. You're really gonna ditch us like that and leave us with this half Frenchy magoo? Yep, deal with it. <laughs> and that's basically how it went down. So there you go. That's how you make another lens. Waterways dominate the country, though. There's even a town with no roads and only canals. But how did it end up this way? Somewhere around the 9th century. Venezia kind of style. Of Venice style. Flooding, and they invented these seawalls known as dikes, which surrounded polders or reclaimed land plots protected by the dikes. To this day, the Netherlands has reclaimed about a fifth of its total landmass from the sea. So, what would happen if all the dikes were destroyed and all the water just came and flooded everything? Scientists speculate that the country would go from looking like this to this. Whoa, Amsterdam would be gone. Yep. Luckily, the Dutch are fantastic engineers and have been taming this dragon for centuries. And speaking of engineering, there are so many notable spots to check out in case you ever visit. So many museums, but the most notable one probably being the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam, the Royal Palace, the Van Gogh Museum, the Anne Frank House, Numerous castles like these, numerous star-shaped fortress towns, so many amusement parks like these, the enclaves and exclaves of Beryl Nassau, we talked about this in the Belgium episode, the world's largest flower garden at Kuchenhof, Austerlitz Pyramid, this prehistoric burial site, and of course there are somewhere around 1,000 historic windmills left in the country Damn, from the 1800s, that's cool. mostly in the Kinderdijk area, a UNESCO heritage site. Keep in mind- Bit stereotypical, but I guess they're there, so that's cool. The country cool. has a ton of modern wind turbines that help supply energy to the nation, a topic that will be discussed in Greek philosopher Pythias visited in the 3rd century BC and he said about this place, more people have died in the struggle against water than in the struggle against men. The Netherlands is really unlike any other country in Europe because in order for them to even have physical land, a lot of work has to go into it. For one, the country is the lowest country in Europe, elevation wise, over a quarter of the land and a- Lowest country but tallest people. I mean although, um, to call it? <laughs> Some of the Balkan countries are very tall people as well, but yeah, I guess in Northwestern Europe, I mean, they are really tall <laughs> for such a low country. A fifth of the population lies below sea level, and about half of the land lies less than a meter above sea level. The lowest point actually being here at Soitplas Polder, and the highest point of the mainland European part of the country at a small hill called Falseberg, just over a thousand feet or 322 meters high. However, in the entire kingdom of the Netherlands, the highest point would actually be Mount Scenery, a potentially active volcano on the island of Saba in the Caribbean. Back to mainland Europe though, within this complex system of waterways and canals, the famous Rhine River that goes through all of Europe and the longest in the country actually ends in Rotterdam. The largest body of water would be Lake or Bay Yelsemir, contained within the N302 and e This is a man-made body of water though, it is hard to determine the largest natural body of water since most lakes are artificial. But some say it could be Lake Tuke, Tukemia, or Na Nah, them, yeah. E22 highways. In order to manage all the flooding in the south, though, the Netherlands has undergone one of the largest engineering projects in modern history. The Delta Works is a series of massive elevated levees that close off sea estuaries, preventing flooding. They even have backup levees in case one down the line bursts. In the north, though, the Walden Islands act as kind of like natural barriers against the sea. All this land reclamation has left many of the inland areas exposed to what are labeled as the largest open sand drifts in Europe. Keep in mind, they are not deserts, but rather strange, wet, sandy plots in the middle middle of green shrubbery, a rare natural sight to come across mm. anywhere in the world. So in a nutshell, the entire country is basically one big river delta. Hmm. We should hang out sometime. Whew. Uh -huh. so that's just about it for now. I gotta get my triple shot of espresso break, which means we need a guy who knows a few things. <laughs> Besides all the water nice chaos, editing. the Netherlands is quite a powerful nation considering its size. They rank in the top 20 largest world economies, usually around 17th or 16th place, and they rank somewhere in the top 5 to 10 largest exporters on earth. In fact, they have the oldest stock exchange in the world dating back to 1602. Didn't that I've heard this before, like pretty cool. Whole tulip mania thing where oh, yeah. people sold a single bulb for the price of like an entire ship? That was not the stock market, that was just a socioeconomic phenomenon and at its height sold for 10 times the annual wage of a skilled craftsman. Anyway, today, although they produce about 80% of the world's tulips and over half of the world's cut flower exports, their economy is mostly driven by- And they produce the orange carrot. By the survey. Because I love orange. But you know, tragically, the color orange on the flag was changed to the color red. Why, why is the flag not orange anymore? Why, why is it red now?
Come on. <laughs> energy sectors. After the discovery of a natural gas field in 1959, the Dutch became a fuel powerhouse. The Shell oh, Company North became the oil. largest and most internationally recognized Dutch company in the world. Besides the petroleum industry, though, the Dutch are well known for their electronics and tech innovation. The company Philips invented the audio tape, which helped oh, with other formats Neat. like videotapes, CDs, DVDs, and Blu-rays. Yeah, the company was Dutch, but keep in mind it was invented in Hassel, Belgium. Oh, Belgium. We love you, but... Don't try to f***ing take this from us. Otherwise, it does Is Hassel Belgium in the French part or in the Dutch part? Just wondering. Oh yeah, so it's a Belgian city, so I guess it's probably Dutch. And in the Flemish region, okay. Yeah. Okay. Pretty neat. Dutch have made great strides towards environmental protection. It's not uncommon to find animal crossing bridges to allow wildlife to cross over That's highways. That's pretty cool. 70 mammal species exist here, such as hares, hedgehogs, stoats, and deer. In addition, according to their government website, they produce over 65 billion euros in vegetable, fruit, flour, meat, and dairy products. Speaking of which, the modern orange-colored carrot was originally bred orange yep. here in the Netherlands to specifically honor the king. Since then, orange carrots are now... Yeah, because the king. Uh... William of Orange, I think, yeah, something like that. Kind of an international staple. And speaking of which, food. Because there's other ca there's there's carrots of other colors, yeah. Food. Some top notable dishes you guys, the Dutch geography peeps, suggested we mentioned include things like various types of stamp pots, Dutch pancakes with powdered sugar, apple tart. Oh yeah. Ball, split pea soup, rookwurst. Puffages like the like mi mini pancakes. Stroop waffles. Stroop. Oh yeah, delicious. I love stroop waffles. Those are good. Especially if you put them like over a cup of like hot tea or something like a hot coffee, you know, it's it's like steamed a little bit. It's good. So many potato dishes. I love potatoes, but potatoes are from you know, uh, the Americas. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> you can thank um, South America for. Potatoes. <laughs> Smoked eel. Gin was invented here. Sorry, Brits. Oh, really? Breakfast, oh, yeah, yeah. Gin was invented there, I think. And then I guess it was introduced to, I think, England, so. Sprinkles but, uh, on toast. I've seen this before. They also called this, like, fairy bread. Yeah. Toast is common. And the pride and joy of the nation, howda cheese. Yep, that's. Dude, howda. Dude, I love howda. It's so good. I love smoked chowda, actually. That's probably one of my favorite cheeses. Smoked chowda is delicious. Ah, so good. It's 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 just so good. Man, I love this cheese. Like, no joke. It's really, really delicious. If you haven't tried chowda before, especially smoked chowda, I really recommend trying it. It just tastes so good. You know, I have to give credit... Where it's still, man, one of the best cheeses, seriously. And I love cheese, so. Um, actually, I have a tip, though. <laughs> if you get some chowda, I mean, get a lot of chowda, first of all. And then when you have the chowda, right? Um, I'd actually recommend, if you can, to smoke it yourself. Because the smoked chowda is way more expensive. So if you just get regular chowda and a lot of it, you can buy it like in bulk at places like Costco, for example. Uh, if you get like a just get a lot of powder and then smoke it yourself, so <laughs> it'll be even more smoky and really delicious. That's just a tip though, I have. So let's get on with the video. That's how you pronounce it, guys. Oh, and keep in mind, they used to be the largest beer exporters in the world, Heineken being their top brand until Mexico beat them in 2010. <laughs> Cool. Wow. It's also important <laughs> to note that you will probably find lots of Indonesian and Surinamese dishes like satay or salted cod buns. Oh, so yeah. The, the colonization period, yeah. Indonesian and. A little dishes, cultural cue sure. that hints towards the colonial past, which brings us to. Thank you, Noah. Follow him on Instagram. Yep. That just happened. Now, in Europe, you have all different types of people that operate with all different customs and ideologies. Here, they have two sayings that kind of sum up how a lot of their country operates. Meten is weten, and geselligheid kent geen tijd. How is that, Dutchies? Terrible? Good? Well, you're gonna get what I give. Anyway, the country has about 17... Oh, yeah, I mean, Dutch is also a little bit like Arabic, I think, you know, because, like, they have a lot of those... those ha sounds. Ha. It's very, uh... ha-centric. <laughs> Pretty interesting how things considered, yeah. 
I think, you know, I guess, I, I think Dutch, uh, Netherlands, I uses like the ga sound a lot. Like maybe even a bit more than France and Germany. So it's pretty interesting. But that's why it kind of does sound a little bit like Arabic. I mean, honestly, French and German do also sound a bit like Arabic. A Hebrew or something like that. You know, they'll have that ha sound in it. Pretty interesting. 15.5 million people and is the most densely populated nation in Europe. About 77% of the population identifies as Dutch, to whatever extent that may mean, whereas 10% are other Europeans, and the remainder are made up of other people groups, mostly Turks, Indonesians, as well as the Surinamese, and surprisingly, even some Americans. They use the Euro as their currency, they use the type. Yes, Americans have immigrated there, I guess. Interesting. <laughs> C and F plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now, we all know that Dutch is the official language of the Netherlands. However, if you speak English, you should have no problem at all visiting. Netherlands has the highest proficiency in English out of any non-English official country in the world. Some oh, yeah. They're pretty good at English. Dutch people claim they can comfortably speak English, and around 94% of the country is in some way bilingual. Geography Anna told... I've met, yeah, I've met Dutch people. They're pretty good at English, all things considered. Yeah, definitely. I remember this, uh, this guy in the past, yeah. <laughs> it was interesting. Give me a joke. Many times Dutch kids will ask their parents, Hey, Mom. Yes, honey. Why do we have to learn English, but the British don't have to learn Dutch? Because our ancestors decided it would be a great idea to trade New York for Suriname and one small island in Indonesia. It's important to note, though, that there are two other regional <laughs> languages accepted in Dutch society. They are Frisian, spoken in the northern Friesland region, and the other being Papimiento, a Dutch... Yeah, and Frisian is, I think, is it Frisian? Shoot, or is it Flemish? Um, Frisian, let's just check. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I heard that, I think, Frisian, I think, was um one of the closest languages to English. I yeah, I think Frisian is the closest language to English. Yeah, pretty interesting. Dutch Creole spoken in the ABC Islands. When it's already kind of well known that the Dutch are the tallest people on average in the world, men averaging around six foot one and women around five foot seven. And once again, here's 2016 Vincent explaining. Latest studies have shown that natural selection has been the biggest reason. Being tall is equal to being more athletic, successful, and healthy. Men Ah, uh, so just, I guess, the woman or the tall guys, and, you know, <laughs> woman, you know, you always see this as a trend, kind of, oh, woman said they'll only marry six foot guys, so, <laughs> maybe that's why the Netherlands, uh, maybe that's why the Dutch are so tall. <laughs> yeah, natural selection, right? <laughs> I mean, and they are a relatively small country, and very, um, you know, let's call it. Very high density area, so maybe, maybe that's Many what. Many educated men start families after their studies. Fast forward a couple of years, with length being very heritable, and the result is a nation of giants. Yeah, we're outbreeding short people. Mm. Religion in the Netherlands is interesting because historically they used to be predominantly Christian, mostly Protestant, but today about half the population identifies as unaffiliated, which, depending on who you ask, could be anything from the largest unaffiliated group, agnostics, at about 34%, to the growing number of eatists at around 28%, which is kind of like a technical term for spiritual but not religious. Otherwise, Islam at about 5% of the population is mostly practiced by Turkish and Indonesian communities. Christianity, although... So, let's so see. What exactly is... Yitist? Yitist. Um... So, Yitism... Dutch, yeah, okay, so I guess it's Dutch. Uh, is an unspecified belief in an undetermined transcend transcendent aspect of deity of nature and power as well as independent. Okay. Is a Dutch term for a range of beliefs held by people who, on the one hand, inwardly suspect or indeed believe that there must be something undefined. So it's like a deist, I think, kind of. Not like a Christian deist, but just a deist, I guess. Someone who believes in God, but doesn't, you know, not tied to any religion. Kind of sounds like that. Sounds pretty similar, yeah. Agnostic deism, yeah. Yeah, I guess agnostic deism would be pretty close. Although many atheists do not believe in one or more gods, and they're thus agnostic atheists. Class 
Protestant deism and spiritual, but not religious. Okay. Interesting. Well, not practiced regularly by most of the people, still plays a heavy cultural role in the Netherlands. Yeah, I think most people are baptized there. Holidays like Christmas, Easter, Pentecost, and Ascension are still celebrated by everyone in a Dutch. Yeah, a lot of controversy on this, uh, Zwarte, yeah, the, the Zwarte Piet, I think, yeah. No, good, I'm not really a fan of that. It's like, you know, as you can see, it's like blackface. Maybe if they just toned it down and made it more like, I guess, it's supposed to be, or maybe just... How it could be, maybe if it was just looked more like, I guess, a few splotches of black paint made it look more like ash instead of in the whole black face, because it honestly looks too much. And a lot of the, a lot of the people say it's like tradition, but I mean, honestly, if, traditions, I mean, if it's kind of an annoying tradition or offensive tradition, I don't see why, you know, just get rid of it or update it, make it better. Honestly, I don't really care about tradition that much, to be honest, but yeah. It's it's the country I can't really say much, but uh yeah, not really a fan of this Zwarte Piet thing, whatever. Manner. At one point, they were a vast empire that spanned across every inhabited continent. Australia was at one point called New Holland. Yeah. Holland, New and New Zealand is named after the Dutch province of Zeeland, I think. So. New Zealand named after the Zeeland province. Tasmania named after this Dutch guy. New York was oh, once know called that. New Amsterdam. Yeah, that I know, and yeah. So on. Otherwise, what is the Dutch way of doing things? Many of you guys... And the New Netherlands, yeah. Dutch geography people have told me, there's a Dutch saying, Act normal, colony. which is ironic, considering that they are almost anything but normal. And here's random Hannah to explain culture stuff. Historically, the Dutch have always kind of had a counter-traditional mindset that shaped the way they developed as a nation. For one, they are one of the few remaining monarchies left in the world, technically a unitary parliamentary constitutional monarchy that limits the royal powers. And the people generally like their king. He even has a holiday to himself, and the entire country wears the national color of orange. Of course, the country is known for being a... But they removed it from the flag. Frontrunner and passing what many in the world see as controversial laws. They were the first country to legalize same sex marriage, they have regulated legal prostitution, euthanasia, and they have a policy of tolerance toward recreational soft drugs like marijuana. People 18 years or older are allowed up to 5 grams on them, otherwise, it's a misdemeanor. They are world renowned. Seems rational. Good country, yeah. Always done stuff the first. Oh, always done stuff in, like, uh,. As an example for others, good stuff gets to hear. Selling in field hockey, speed skating, and volleyball teams. Sailing is, of course, one of their longest pastimes. They even have a huge festival once every five years called the Sailed Amsterdam Festival. For Damn. some reason, it's common for people to give birth in their own homes as opposed to a hospital. About one third of all babies are born this way. That's dangerous. Oof. I guess it takes some of the cost off of, um, uh, you know. The healthcare. I mean, because they already have free healthcare, so I guess it takes even, uh, takes even more of the cost off the taxpayer. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I am actually kind of jealous of um, you know, universal healthcare. Wish we had that in the U.S. <laughs> Uh, what about those clog things? Ah, yes. When well, the past, they actually served a very useful purpose. They were worn by farmers, fishermen, and artisans in the past to protect their feet from nails, fish hooks, and other sharp objects. Today, they are mostly sold as souvenirs, and very few people actually wear them, but they're pretty cool. Oh, and hey, Anna, what's up with all those spinny windmill thingy mabobbers? Ah, yes, the iconic symbol of the Netherlands. Well, many of these historic windmills were actually used to pump out excess water to reclaim the land that they now used for farming all before mm. electricity and as for music cool actually i got this one barb said i could have my own segment in the show now instead of just being a one-liner guy yeah that's right uh keith has been upgraded so yeah oh, well enjoy it well that just happened Again, I guess everybody has superpowers now. Historically speaking, the Dutch contributed much to the Baroque period at the end of the Renaissance, with numerous composers, organ players, and vocalists rooted in Christianity. Traditional clog dancing was also a cool way to add percussion to folk music in rural areas. Today, however, even though there are many genres the Dutch enjoy, electronic music reigns supreme. Most of the best well-known DJs in the EDM scene across the world are from the Netherlands. And the Amsterdam dance event, ADE, 
is the world's top and largest electronic music conference. So if you come out here, get ready to get shocked with some musical electricity. Thank you, Keith. And speaking of the development of the Netherlands over time, let's talk about history in the quickest way I can put it. Hamburg and Bronze Age cultures, Iron Age with Celt and Germanic groups, Gallic Wars, the Romans come in, Frankish kingdoms, Charlemagne, blah, blah, blah. Friesland once had a Viking ruler, Lotharingia, Holy Roman Empire, confusing Burgundian and Spanish Habsburg and... Holy Roman Empire. Neither holy, nor Roman, nor an empire. <laughs> Pretty much just Germany. City states, the Spanish takeover, Dutch revolt, 80 years of war against Spain, this dude is a hero, golden age in stock market, Dutch East India Company, exploring years, Dutch Empire, Napoleon drama, Belgium breaks away, Luxembourg breaks away. Epic Napoleon. Chad Napoleon. World War One, relatively neutral. World War Two, attacked by Germans, not neutral. Decolonialism after the war. Mining Golden Age. Founding co-members of the European coal and steel community, which would later become the EU. Government encourages over half a million people to move out. Euro adopted. And here we are today. Really? They encourage many people to move out? Become the EU. Government encourages over half a million people to move out. Euro. Interesting. I didn't know about this. Dutch encouraged to move out. Why are the Dutch leaving the Netherlands? 69% of Dutch immigrants chose a European destination. Huh. Wait, interesting. Hmm. Yeah, so the Netherlands is the only Western European country experiencing net immigration, although similar trends are visible in the UK and to a lesser extent Germany. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> Most go to Belgium and Germany then, huh? Interesting stuff. Huh. Yeah, why leave? Huh. Interesting. Adopted, and here we are today. Some notable people you guys, the Dutch geography people, suggest we mention might include people like William of Orange, the first king, Michael de Reuter, possibly the most famous painters, Vincent van Gogh, and Rem. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's pronounced David. I can't remember. <laughs> Yeah, Vince Van Gogh, pretty famous. Yeah, I remember doing things in art class and learned a lot in history class about him. I guess, art history. But yeah, I learned a bit of Dutch history, actually, in school, so... Yeah. Rembrandt, Anthony Van Llewellyn-Hook, Willem Berendt, Abel Tasman, Anne Frank, Max Verstappen, Glennis Grace, Dick Bruna, these soccer players, these skaters, and of course the royal family. And of course there's so many others I could have mentioned. Of course I butchered all the pronunciations. But we're really <laughs> running out of time and we gotta finish this marathon. So without further ado, let's see who the Netherlands hangs out with. Now, there's a reason why it's called going Dutch when paying for a meal. The Netherlands likes to share 50, 50, systematic yeah. and mathematically equivalent to what is owed to each based on the merit they've earned. First of all, pretty much all the former colonies have some kind of amicable relation to the Netherlands. The Afrikaans language in South Africa is basically just an Africanized version of Dutch. Tons of Surinamese and Indonesians have been migrating to the Netherlands for decades. Otherwise, the USA and Canada are very close friends as well. During World War II, the royal family actually took refuge in Canada, and Canada actually quickly changed the law in which the hospital was temporarily considered extra territorial so that the princess could be born Dutch. To this day, the Netherlands sends tons of flowers every year in gratitude. For the U.S., the two go way back all the way to New Amsterdam before it was New York. The Dutch have immigrated to the U.S. for centuries. Five American presidents have been- Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've actually had a lot of Dutch-descended presidents. Yeah, true, true. And, uh, you know, one of the best presidents, Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah, Teddy Roosevelt. Good stuff, good stuff. been of Dutch descent. They are each other's third largest direct foreign investors. They are both charter members of NATO since 1949. And overall, in most global affairs, the two usually work together as close allies. With I know a lot of Dutch people don't really like American people. <laughs> Germany, it's like a funny love. But there's definitely good people, of course, as well, so. 
Not all of them hate Americans. Love hate relationship. Like the two share so much historically, both being under the same influences like the Western Roman Empire, the Franks, and even their first king, William of Orange, belonged to a German royal house. Then again, World War II <laughs> like was many kind of like a jerk move, and the Dutch never really forgot about it. But nonetheless, they've moved on, and today things are fine. Germany is their largest trading partner, both in imports and exports. Many Germans and Dutch cross over and visit, study, live, and have families with each other's countries. When it comes to their best friend, however, almost every single Dutch person I have talked to has said they're little brother they love picking fun on and calling stupid Belgium or at least specifically the northern Flanders region of Belgium where the Dutch speakers are and many see the Flanders region as just an extension of the Dutch realm the royal families love each other King William Alexander even bestowed the knight grand cross to King Philip and his wife Flemish and Dutch people have been intermarrying and cooperating side by side since the beginning and even after Belgium's independence they've still clung on as the only two Dutch official speaking nations in Europe and even then Belgium is only half Dutch speaking so they really can't afford to separate ties in conclusion the lowest nation in Europe with the tallest people on earth and with centuries of discovery, invention, innovation, and tradition, it's no wonder why the Dutch say they keep their heads above water. Stay tuned, <laughs> New Zealand is coming up next. So once again, Vincent, thank you so much for being in this episode. Our favorite Dutchman, you have made your country proud. Dutch burn! Oh. Bruh. That was fun. Uh, let's check out the flag. Backslash Fan Friday. Hope you liked the Netherlands episode. So, as you know, this is the part where I fix some of the small mistakes we made in the episode, or I talk about the things that didn't quite make it into the episode. For one, yes, I know there are quite a few spelling errors. The largest one probably being the Vaden C, not the Walden C. Honestly, I have no idea why I got that wrong. Sorry. I accidentally used the picture of the king and his mom, not his wife. What I meant to say <laughs> is the Netherlands Bruh. is the most densely packed country in the EU, not all of Europe. That title actually mm -hmm. still belongs to Monaco. One thing. I wish oh yeah huh i guess that would make sense we could have kept but i had to cut it out of the video because it was too long we but considering non-micro states we talked about the massive infrastructure of transportation in the country they have over 140,000 kilometers of road 3,000 kilometers of train track 6,200 kilometers of waterways including overpass water bridges and get this over 35,000 kilometers of bicycle paths. oh yeah bike infrastructure is pretty great Hopefully we get that. Hopefully we get more of that all across the world and the US could use some more bicycle infrastructure. Hoping we get more of that. Over a third of the country claims that the bicycle is their main form of transportation on a daily basis. And speaking of which, KLM is the... Make cities more uh, bike friendly and pedestrian friendly. World's oldest national airline. And uh, they supposedly have the oldest national anthem. I also forgot to mention that there are three recognized minority languages. They are Dutch, hmm. Saxon, Limburgish, and Hronings. I accidentally said that Papimento was a Dutch Creole. It's actually more of like a Portuguese Creole with some Dutch influence. Apparently April Fool's Day was started here because of the war stuff. I also wanted to talk about the relationship they had with Japan. It's weird because the Japanese were pretty much isolated for a long time. Time, and the only oh yeah, yeah. The Dutch and Japanese have had a long relationship along with the Portuguese. Yeah. The country they allowed to trade with was actually the Netherlands. In the 1600s, they set up a port at Hirado. Also, I forgot to mention that for a very brief period of time, they actually colonized parts of Brazil. And yeah, that's just about it. There's a lot of other things I could have mentioned. If I forgot anything, feel free to write it in the comments. But in the meantime, we gotta get to the flag. So without further ado... <laughs> Ah, this is gonna be my last video before I take a little break, and we are actually going to go to the Netherlands. Fun fact, in every episode, I try Damn, to wear at least cool. one color that you can find on the flag of the country. This was the first time I wore a color that was not found on the flag, only because orange is the national color of the Netherlands. Although, technically, exactly. you can kind of put orange on the flag. And speaking of the flag, the flag is a horizontal tricolor of red, white, and blue. Now, here's where things get a little confusing. The stripes in themselves kind of don't have direct meanings, but are rather derived from historical incidences that played a role in the country. I mean, I know that they were the first country to have the, like, tree color, tricolor flag, but it's still a boring-ass flag, in my opinion. No offense. Sorry? I, I mean, it's cool you you're the original one, but it's still kind of boring, in my opinion. During the Middle Ages... The Welsh flag and the Bhutan flag. Pretty cool. It is said that the colors were inspired from a mix between the colors for the Bavarian coat of arms and the Count of Holland. After the Dutch revolt against... It'd be pretty cool if they had, a. Uh, Crest or emblem on the flag, in my opinion. It's the Spanish, led by Prince William of Orange, the first prince's flag. That's so, so that's such a better flag. It's it's so much more like unique too. That'd be a, such a cool little flag if they had that, and especially if they put like a crest. Flag was used with orange on the top instead of. 
The orange looks so much cooler in my opinion, so much more original. Right. It wasn't until the 1500s and early 1600s that red replaced orange, and there are many theories as to why, but many might say that over time, orange dye would fade into red, which meant red was just easier to use. Nonetheless, for the longest time, they were both used simultaneously. It wasn't until 1937 that Queen Wilhelmina issued by royal decree that it would stay red, white, and blue. Bruh. On the King's Day, they fly a regular flag with an orange Good. pennant, honoring the royal family and the orange color that All represents orange their household. Pennant. Keep in mind, there's a lot of other stuff that goes into this, like there was that whole Batavian Republic thing. Nowadays, with most flags online, <laughs> most flags are online anyway, might as well keep it as an orange flag. Like Napoleon years, you know, prior to that. Stuff that goes into this, like there was that whole Batavian Republic thing. Interesting. During the Napoleon years, you know, prior to that, they were under the House of Burgundy. I mean, still a cool ass flag. With the St. Andrew's cross. Blah, that St. Andrew's blah, blah. flag What's is also cool. Also interesting is that, as we mentioned, the Kingdom of the Netherlands is made up of four countries, three constituent ones in the Caribbean, as well as three other municipalities. Each one of these has their own flag. We don't have time to explain about each one, but basically they each tell a story of history and culture. And at one point they were collectively called the Netherland Antilles. They use this flag with six stars. And uh, yeah, lots of interesting history and stuff that goes into this. And with that being said, it is now time for the coat of arms. Arms. The coat of arms comes in three variations, the greater royal version, the middle state version, and the simplified lesser version. Each one can be found within the higher leveled coat of arms. In this one, we'll cool discuss the coat of arms. state version. Basically, it's a shield with a crowned and armed lion holding a sword and seven arrows, symbolizing the seven provinces of the Union of Utrecht. On top lies the royal crown, supported on each side by two other lions, all on top of a banner reading in French, surprisingly, Je m'entendrai, or I shall maintain. The reason why it's in French is because it was the motto of the princedom of Chalon or Orange, and when William of Orange inherited the title when he became ruler, he just kind of kept it. Plus, French was widely used as a lingua franca at the time, so it wasn't uncommon to see it used in many non-French native areas. And prior to this, they had a few other coat of arms. They were basically the same thing, just drawn a little different. Also, uh, you might see this image. It is basically the royal family flag or the royal standard. Bro, that's an epic flag. Kind of more epic than the actual flag. <laughs> basically just about it and with all that being said and done it is time for geog all right that was really fun to watch very much enjoyed it um let's check out some of the comments the lowest elevation in europe yet tallest people in the world welcome to the land that makes its own land the place where water is your biggest enemy and friend huh europe's interesting meticulous yeah a little crazy and adventurous on the netherlands okay Oh, and for the record, that random dude is Hannah's little brother. Oh, okay. Huh. <laughs> A lot of Dutch comments, I'm gonna assume. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. We don't say it's raining a lot today. No, we say, What in coot we are. <laughs> and I think it's beautiful. Oh, man. I know I'm living here, of course. Yeah. The, the freaking cliche as hell. Geek all in a seared comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're always gonna see this in a video related to Dutch people. <laughs> the get the get colonized comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Dutch. I live and I live in the Netherlands. This guy explained our country better than my history teacher. Every Dutch person who sees a video about the country, the mighty and invincible Dutch Armada has arrived. We are now conquering and occupying this said comment section. <laughs> Ten percent of people watching this. People interested in the Netherlands. 90% Dutch people. <laughs> American watching here. One does not just simply skip J Johan Cruyff with the, with the D soccer players. <laughs> Originally, Bluetooth and Wi Fi are also invented in the Netherlands. Are they? Huh. <laughs> Top Bluetooth is Swedish. Uh, and I thought it was Dan. Okay. Um, huh. So, Bluetooth is indeed Swedish, created by Ericsson, and named after a Danish king. It seems it has no particular link to the lens whatsoever. Damn it. Uh, hmm. Ericsson. Is it Dutchman? Is he? Huh. Not even sure. Uh, who invented Bluetooth? Let's see. By Ericsson Mobile in Lund. Okay. 
Exchange is Swedish company. The company was founded by this guy, though. Sweet. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> not sure. Anyway, uh, me as a Dutchman, I can say that the part, uh, I can say that the part of Geek Holland Seed is the pure definition of accuracy. Yeah, uh, every Dutch person with some historical knowledge, William of Orange was not a king of the Netherlands. <laughs> Christ, instead, how to... William of Orange was the king of the Netherlands. Uh, William Frederick of Orange Nassau was proclaimed William the first king of the Netherlands after Napoleon was defeated. Although the video was talking about William the Silent, he was only the stadtholder, stadthouder, and main leader of the Dutch revolt against Spain. Oh. The highest peak of the Netherlands is a person. <laughs> uh... If you speak English, you should have no problem at all visiting Dutch people. How would mine be? How would mean be? Yeah, Dutch is Dutch writing is actually pretty similar. Like a lot of the times, you can kind of understand Dutch like written too. Pretty interesting. <laughs> Literally, that sets the Netherlands apart from all the other countries as the best country-wide cycling infrastructure in the world. Yet it is not mentioned. Uh, Some are mentioned. I mean, also the. Denmark is pretty good cycling infrastructure, I've heard, so. <laughs> yeah. I'm Swedish. I had a long-distance relationship with the Dutch guy. The Netherlands is a real, really cool country, and I'm happy that the possible and I'm happy that I had the possibility to visit. I really miss Poffer. Just yeah, those little mini pancakes, good stuff, huh? Please, the real reason the Dutch are so tall, all the short people drown. Wow, Netherlands. Greeting from Indonesia. <laughs> Lives in the Netherlands. Doesn't live in Amsterdam. Americans asking how that's possible. <laughs> what do you mean? I. <laughs> There's other places in the Netherlands like Rotterdam and all the, uh, and. Oh man, and and Gouda is also a city too. You can... <laughs> so there's there's lots of places in the Netherlands. Not everyone lives in Amsterdam. I know that. <laughs> Oh, Zeeland. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, that was a pretty cool video, all things considered. Um, really enjoyed it. Any Dutch people watching, comment down below. Cool ass country, and I love Kauda. So yeah, um, comment down with your thoughts, opinions, and recommendations. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Bye bye.